Hi everyone, so this is going to be update number one of the MSU. The MSU is the material switching unit. It's a multi-material upgrade based on the MME2, but with key changes in order to make it as cheap, as reliable, and as compatible as possible. So it's basically compatible with almost any 3D printer, uh, in terms of price, we have been rather successful uh, on that point since we can be built for under 75 US dollars. And uh, in terms of reliability, uh, it's uh, honestly pretty good right now for the Bowden setup, but we still have quite a few things that we need to improve on uh, on that regard. And uh, yeah, as you can see from the title, uh, we're going to be working with update from now on. So updates allow me to be a lot more vague in terms of what I want to address and I don't need something specific to talk about. And uh, yeah, from now on, it makes more sense to work with update because we have a functional prototype for basically everything I wanted to do. And now it's just keeping the project going, helping out people that are building the thing and um, just keeping the thing on track so updates make more sense. Uh, one thing is that I'm also going to try to keep those videos as short as possible. So hopefully I'm going to try to keep every single update under five minutes. Uh, this way I'm going to be able to A, do them more frequently and B, it's going to be less boring because I know that my previous videos were 10 minutes, 20 minutes long. And uh, yeah, even I have a hard time listening to them. <laughs> And uh, last time I was talking about how we were trying to make the E3D V6 compatible with the MSU. And uh, yeah, the E3D V6 basically was producing filament tips that were up to 2.1 millimeters. And as you can imagine, this doesn't really play along well with the MSU system. So uh, we made a lot of changes uh, in order to make it work um, with the E3D V6. And I'm happy to say that we have succeeded and uh, extremely well, actually. So um, I would say the main changes that helped that were uh, switching to um, PTFE tubing with tighter clearances, the new merger, uh, I'm more on that later, and um, also slicer changes uh, overall. So the E3D V6 works, and that also means that most likely basically every single hot end available, at least for the Bowden system for now, uh, are going to be compatible with the MSU. So I'm really happy about that. And on the merger side of things, I'm extremely happy to report that the new merger has been working flawlessly. So that's why I have removed the old merger uh, from the GitHub repo. And I've also added uh, clearance options for the merger. So everyone has a different 3D printer and some of them are gonna work better than others and others are just gonna be far worse are at printing the merger. Uh, that's why we have clearances from 0.2 millimeters up to um, 0.5 millimeters. I would recommend starting with 0.5 millimeters and going down if you need it uh, because something too small is gonna cause jams and print failures, something too big, nothing's gonna happen. And uh, the only reason you would want some tighter clearances is if you're printing some flexible filaments. I'm also happy to report that we have had the first successful print uh, by someone other than me. So here's the little Gustav uh, that was printed. And uh, yeah, looks extremely good. Uh, I'm really happy to see that other people were able to build this thing and that it is working. We also have quite a lot more people that are starting to attempt this build. Uh, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, speaking of attempting to build the thing, uh, I've made quite a lot of modifications to the build guide to make it more readable and more usable. And I am also going to start making videos about the assembly process. So I'm gonna make small five minutes videos about each step, put them all in the playlist. And in a couple months, we're gonna have a full playlist uh, with 10, 15 videos about how to assemble the MSU. So as you can see, I've switched to my uh, camera. That's because the microphone on my computer just died. That kind of sucks, but what can you do about it? So the print that you were looking at kind of failed. Uh, that's because the filament parking position was way too close to the gears. Uh, so at some point, the blue filament was retracted a tiny bit too much, got out of the gears. And at that point, it was just out of the MSU. There was like mm, no coming back. Uh, so that's why the blue filament just stopped at some point. And that also happened with the white filament. Uh, but as you can see, it was very close to the end, so it's not very noticeable. Uh, other than that print, uh, after that kind of small failure, I fixed those settings. And I printed that Pikachu in uh, white PLA and white uh, glow in the dark uh, PLA as well. And uh, that print looks uh, decent. It looks very cool at night. Uh, but as you can see, it has some small defects. 
uh, those are related to my 3D printer, not to the MSU. And uh, here's a small clip of uh, the X gantry and how much play it has. And as you can see, some maintenance was really required. Um, and uh, yeah, so boot setup, it's looking extremely good. Honestly, if you want to build it, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, the build guide is starting to be pretty, pretty good. Uh, a couple people have or are starting to build it, and um, I would say that it's doable uh, for people that are relatively comfortable with configuring Marlin. Um, and uh, yeah, dirt drive setup is coming along extremely well as well. Uh, should be testing it in the following weeks. And um, the film and flow sensor, uh, I've made a bit of progress, but there's still a long way to go before we have it ready to go. Uh, but honestly, seeing the result that I have now, um, at least for the Bowden setup, it's either it works or it doesn't. So if it starts failing, it's gonna fail a ton of times in the print. But if, it, if you have it properly configured and it doesn't fail, then you most likely won't need the film and flow sensor. I still think that it's a key element to have in the MSU, but I do believe that you can have a lot of successful prints without having a full-length flow sensor. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it for me guys. If you want more info on this project or just follow it, uh, you can, well, first off, subscribe on YouTube, but if you want to be closer to the dev work and just ask questions, uh, you can join the Discord server. I will have it linked down below. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for me, and I will see you guys next time.